Let's get to the heart of this because uh, sure. in the implication uh, with Donald Trump in the White House here is that uh, imports of foreign automobiles are actually a threat to national security. Your reaction? Obviously, we disagree with that. Uh, we have a hard time uh, linking cars to national security. They are not a threat. Uh, they are a powerful engine driving our economy. We, we contribute three and a half percent to our America's GDP. We support more than seven million American workers. Uh, so, so we're struggling to find the link between imported cars and, and a threat to national security. Hmm. All right. So in terms of the pain that uh, could happen, that would happen to the U.S. auto industry, I want you to go through that. And as we go through that, hop into the Bloomberg terminal here because I want to show our viewers uh, what's been happening in terms of the sales, the seasonally adjusted annual rate of sales in the uh, blue line here. It's been uh, plateauing, shall we say, uh, skidding just a little bit ever since the early part of 2016. Uh, how would this uh, hurt the U.S. auto industry if if these tariffs were enacted? Well, as your, your chart shows, uh, we are entering a fragile time for this industry. We are a cyclical industry and have come off of seven years of record growth. Um, but, but automakers have experienced uh, a leveling off or a decline in sales. Yeah. Uh, so this is really coming at a bad time. And, and ultimately, this will increase prices for consumers. This will uh, you know, result in a drop in demand and, and ultimately uh, we'll see job losses in the auto sector, which is, uh, you know, the last thing we, we would like to see. And um, that, that has ramifications, uh, very deep ramifications on our economy as a whole. Now, I see an often quoted number, a few quoted numbers here, that the price of an imported car would, would rise by $6,000. The price of a U.S.-built car would rise about $2,000. So if we can avoid that, uh, a lot of folks are saying, you know, tariffs are the wrong approach. We don't need this. What's the right approach, in your opinion? Well, we think we should be uh, expanding market access opportunities for auto exports. Uh, we, we only have access to um, 20% 20, 20 of the market, the global market, tariff-free. So in order to, to strengthen our economy, we think and encourage the administration to seek opportunities to reduce tariff and non-tariff barriers uh, globally and, um, you know, versus increasing tariffs, uh, which would ultimately uh, have the opposite of the intended approach. Jennifer, I want to throw up this quick chart, which broadly takes a look at how much of the market would be impacted, right, which is about a quarter of the U.S. market in terms of foreign vehicle makers market share in the United States. I'm curious, out of all of the automakers, foreign and domestic, that you represent, have you heard any voices that would be in support of some form of tariffs as being advantageous to them? That is a great question. And I have to say, I've never seen the industry as united as, as we are today, uh, you know, opposing these tariffs, because throughout the value supply chain, there is simply no support for this. Suppliers, aut all automakers, domestic and international, auto dealers, we're all opposed to this because we understand the consequences that could, that could come from this uh, uh, decision. So uh, we are all trying to do what we can to prevent this from happening. Um, because we believe it will be bad for our industry and our economy.